the blood of Jesus over our nation. Amen? Amen. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Wow, you guys sound good this morning. That really is good. You sound like you mean that. You mean that? I am the righteousness of God in Christ. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. God hears my prayers. Sin is dead in my body, but the Spirit is life. In all things, I am more than a conqueror in Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God is my provider. All my needs are met. I have no fear, dread, anxiety, or depression. I walk in power, love, and a sound mind. I have the mind of Christ. I take every thought captive and think on good things. My mind is renewed. I am proving what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God in my life. We are the body of Christ, members one with another. Demons tremble at the word of God. Together we put 10,000 to flight, and the enemies of God fall. We serve the one true living God. Jesus, our Savior, is King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus, our Savior, is King of kings and Lord of lords. God is. God is good. Give Him praise this morning. Let's worship.
lifting me up from the ground. Oh, love is the power of my freedom song. There ain't no grave gonna hold my part of time. There ain't no
into it, we step into yes. it. There's no grave that can hold us down. You conquered death, hell, and the grave. The same power, same power is here.
Ain't no grave going to hold my body down. Ain't no dead religion in this place. Amen. Give the Lord a praise this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up a praise. Lift up a praise this morning. He's worthy. Glory, glory. Come on, lift it up. Praise Him. Resurrection power in the house. Glory. Glory to God. You can be seated for a minute. This is Taylor over here. It's her first time here. And she gave her heart to the Lord last week in a chapel service I do on Sunday afternoon. Let's give God praise for that. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. God is good. If you're here this morning and uh, you're visiting for the very first time, anybody here guest for the first time, let me give you some incentive. You get a mug if you're here for the first time. Or maybe, maybe you've been here for the last few weeks, but we haven't given you one of these. Anybody? Anybody here? Okay. You've never gotten a mug? You can have one for 100 bucks. tried to get it off of Terry, <laughs> you forget it, man. It's not that he don't have it. You just ain't going to get it. I'm just, I'm just I'm telling you. Well, God's good. Welcome. Glad you're here this morning. We have a few that are coming back in after uh, getting their vaccines. We're glad to have you here. Uh, I won't try to name them each week. Uh, I don't want to leave anybody out, but I uh, did run into Pat this morning. And uh, we're, we're glad you're here. It's good to be together worshiping the Lord, isn't it? It is a good, good thing. Hey, I want to talk to you about just a few things. First of all, no, our business meeting is not today. Jim Cole's just about scared the life out of me. To <laughs> I walked in, he said, we have our business meeting today, right? And I'm like, what? It's April 18th. The week before, Jim Mackey will be back to preach with us, for us, and then the 18th, We'll have our uh, business meeting. We'll have a, a service, a bit abbreviated. Then we'll have our business meeting. Then we're going outside, aren't we, Sharon? We're going outside, and we're going to grill hamburgers and hot dogs and have a great time. And uh, Pam is going to make milkshakes for everybody, she said. <laughs> Dream on. Okay. All right. Well, you know, it's worth a try. That's all right. And, Jess, we've got camp coming up. Give us the dates of that. Uh, this year's theme is presence, and it's all about just abiding in his presence and soaking in his presence. Um, kids camp is June 13th through the 16th, and teen camp is the 17th through the 20th. Uh, cost is going to be 55 if you're registered by May 2nd. Um, after that, it goes up to 75 until May 23rd. And we expect to uh, have several other uh, churches join us again. And just have a good time. I want you to begin praying toward camp, giving toward camp. Every year, you know, this is 16th year of camp. 16th year of camp. With I, I can still remember the board meeting where we decided to do it. We were in that board meeting, and the board, you remember this, Jim? They said, we agree to underwrite the cost of camp for anything that comes up short. The church will underwrite camp. We really believe we're supposed to do this. 16 years later... The church's general fund has never spent one penny on camp. Camp, camp has been self-sufficient, or there have been those that have given toward camp special giving. We have never had to underwrite the camp in 16 years. Give the Lord praise for that. That's pretty amazing. That's just the way God does things, and uh, I'm so thankful for the board's support and and they're always willing to support, get behind, underwrite. And you know what we find? Every time we find out that God just meets the need in a special way. And I'm so thankful for that. If you're giving today of your tithe or of special offerings, the worship, uh, the uh, uh, welcome desk, of course, uh, has our offering receptacles. And you can give your gifts there. There's also an alms box right there in front of the American flag. Uh, so uh, you can give and salute the flag at the same time. And uh, it's right back there on the side of the, uh, of the audio booth. So we thank you for your giving. Uh, this week we've prepared, and I think they're on your desk, as a matter of fact, in an envelope. 
uh, thousands of dollars worth of checks that are going out to our mission partners and our uh, and benevolence organizations that we support. Um, and that happens. This is the third time we've been able to do that in the last year since COVID came. You know, everybody thought, oh, man, just just pull everything in because as tight as you can because it's going to be tough. But I'm telling you, because of your faithfulness, God's goodness, unexpected things have happened, and we are so thankful that during this time, instead of the other way, it has been so that three times we've been able to send out special gifts, thousands of dollars, three times to our mission partners, to benevolence organizations, and on top of just doing things ourselves as well. So isn't that exciting to be able to do that? Give the Lord praise for that. Will you do that? <laughs> praise God. So, so thankful. You say, well, I guess you don't need my money. You got more than you need. You know what? We could have twice the income what we have we, if, that, if that changed today and we began having twice the income that we have we would we would be able to use it effectively in the kingdom of god i mean we would be able to do that so there's always a need there's always more we can do and we try to be good stewards of your giving and we thank you so much uh wednesday night was just awesome uh how many would you have about 15 about 15 or something something like that uh in here for uh, the study of Romans. You're welcome to come and join that this Wednesday night, 6.30. We also had Spirit Life class, which we did in the foyer because we had untold numbers of children. We did not expect so many kids. And uh, for those of you that brought kids and, and uh, realized we were a little overwhelmed, we, have, we will have additional help this Wednesday. So um, just know that. And the Spirit Life class met out there. We had about 14 or 15 there. It was just awesome, too. So really going well, and you're welcome to come and join us uh, this week at 6.30. Odell, I'm going to ask you to come and, and join me up here if you would. And, and by the way, happy anniversary, you two. Give them a big hand. Will you do that? <clears throat> Odell, uh, Odell and Bonnie have been uh, married um, for around 25 years now. And <laughs> how, many, how many years should I ask you or her? Yeah, how many, how many years? Was it this week or, or week before? this week? How many? 59 years? That's just pretty cool, isn't it? That's pretty, that's the Lord, he said. Yeah. Well, Bonnie would probably agree with that. <laughs> oh, my. We're, we're going to uh, go to prayer at this time. I want to ask Odell to lead us in prayer. As we pray for special needs, I know, Casey, I saw a need you posted for, um, we, we won't use last names because I, we're live, but uh, Megan, I believe, is the name. Is that right? And Sandy mentioned it to me, too. If you have a need, yes. That's fine. Okay, uh, remember Lila this morning. Anybody else? Yes. We've seen God do it before, and let's believe this morning. Let's believe this morning. Amen. Anybody else? Spe urgent need? Yes. Yes, Ron Kimes. Would you touch? He wouldn't mind me saying his last name. Okay. All right. My goodness. A lot, of, a lot of really critical needs. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Urgent needs. Yes. Remember Paul, my old buddy. Okay. Nate? Yes. Okay. I, I don't normally take spoken needs on Sunday morning, but I, I just sense the need to do that. And you can say, you can tell why, can't you? So many. Any other urgent needs somebody wants to mention? If you have a need, if you have a need in your life or your family, 
or you want to believe, for instance, those who have called names this morning, if you have a need or if you want to believe for somebody, I just want you to stand up right now. If you have a need or if you want to believe for somebody, just stand up and Odell's going to lead us in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning, God, because you're a God that's in you're everywhere, Lord, all at once at the same time through the power of your Spirit. And God, you know where each one of us sat. You've heard all the requests this morning and all the lives, all the names, and all the needs, Lord. And God, we, we give them to you, Lord. We believe you, Father, Lord, because we know you're concerned too. You tell us in your word to cast all of our care on you because you care for us. And Father, we, we give all these needs and all these cares into your loving hands this morning. God, we thank you for the promise of your word. In Isaiah 41 and 10, Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And God, we thank you. That was spoken to Israel in its context, Lord, whenever they were challenged. And God, we're challenged. We're challenged in, as individuals, as families, and as a church body. And God, we commit it all into your hand and trust you, Lord, to minister to each need in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's stand. Let's continue to worship.
Can we sing that again? Just the voices. Jesus, we worship you, Lord. We lift our hearts before you, Lord. We magnify you. You're the King of kings. You're the Lord of lords. And we worship you. You alone. You alone. There is no other. There is none beside you. You alone deserve the glory. You alone deserve the our very lives, you alone, we throw ourselves to you. We wait before you, we honor you. You are the King of Kings. We worship you. Mm. All the saints and angels join in song to worship you. We throw our kingly crowns before your feet. We turn our eyes on you, Lord God. Even full of burdens, Lord, we turn our eyes on you. The things of this world grow strangely dim in the light of your glorious face. We exalt thee. Step on in and lift your hands. The king is here. Step on in and lift your hands before him. Worship him in spirit and in truth. The king is here. Oh, we exalt thee, Lord. We exalt thee. We 
incense arise day and night night and day let incense arise day and night night and day let incense arise day and night 
Night and day let incense arise. Day and night, night and day let incense arise. Day and night, just the voices. Let incense arise. The incense of our worship. The incense of our prayers. Let incense Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Mm. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the nations. Be still and know that I am God. For those who wait upon the Lord will never be put to shame. Never. We wait before you. We vow to give you the holy glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just a few minutes before Chris began to sing the day and night, night and day, let incense arise, as I was worshiping, that's what I saw coming literally out of the rooftop of the church, Mm. was the incense of our prayers and our worship Mm. and to our Heavenly Father, to the point where I I was so, I, I thought, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody walks in this building and says, your church is on fire. Because that's how real it was to me. Because I could see that smoke. If you've ever seen incense being burned and you see the smoke just rising up, that's what I saw in my spirit was the incense just rising up and God just basking and just soaking in our worship unto Him, in our worship, in our prayers unto Him, that He was seeing it and He was receiving that. So you guys just, oh, just... Yes. To soak, let your worship just soak up into the heavenlies. Lord Jesus, we love you, God. We worship you. We adore you. We stand in awe of you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we just say just to have your way in this place in every single individual heart, God, and us as a body, God, that we would come into unity and worship in awe and that our praises would just be incense unto your name. And we thank you for it, Jesus. Prophetically speaking, before we move into the ministry of the word, prophetically speaking, I'm going to declare something that I see in my spirit. I'm going to declare something and I want you to come into agreement with us because I believe it's the spirit impressing it on my own heart. And I believe that as I say this, I think many of you will actually sense it as well and know it in your heart to be true. But in I really feel in my heart that this is just the beginning of things that are about to burst forth. There is a liberty of the Holy Spirit that God has ordained. His name is to be in this house. And there is a bursting forth. I see like a bubble bursting forth. And out of that bursting forth, there's liberty of worship, liberty of healing, liberty of this Holy Spirit's activity. Out of the bursting of the glory of the Lord, there will be a sound from heaven and the living things of God will become alive to every one of us. We'll have eyes to see and ears to hear in Jesus' name. Let's lift up a praise this morning. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Come on, lift it up this morning. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be seated in the sweet presence of of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I just love how real God can be. He can be so tangible to us. If we, if we allow Him to share space with us, God wants to share His space with you. We talked about that a few months ago. Remember we were talking about prayer? And we talked about how one aspect of prayer is God sharing space with you. You pour your heart to Him, and He begins to pour His heart to you. The Bible says that in Acts chapter 13, as they ministered to the Holy Spirit, 
before sending Paul into the mission field, the Spirit said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work of the ministry. God spoke out of the place of ministering to him. God ministers to those who minister to him. He speaks with those who speak with him. And this is what, what God wants to do in all of our lives, amen? God wants to bring refreshing in Jesus' name, amen? May it be so in Jesus' precious name. Father, I thank you for your word today. And I ask you now in Jesus' name that you would make yourself very real through your word. Your word is truth. Your word and your spirit agree. And we thank you that we would have eyes to see and ears to hear in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. What we're going to be talking about today is something that I was intending to speak on last week, but the Holy Spirit gloriously interrupted us. And that's a good thing. And I find it to be appropriate to, re to share what I was going to share last week, especially when we were all praying for the needs. There was a need, a lot of urgent needs. And so today, I'm going to be talking about the faith of God. We're going to be talking about faith today. The faith of God. Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 2. I'm reading from the New American, I'm sorry, NIV. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. Faith is the confidence of what we hope for, the assurance about the things that we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. And another translation in the Amplified Bible, it says, Now faith is the assurance. Everybody say this with me. Assurance, title deed, confirmation. Faith is the assurance, the title deed, confirmation of the things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen. Now this is my favorite breakdown of this. It says, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. For this kind of faith, the men of old gained divine approval. The word faith is this Greek word, pistis. And it means to be persuaded, to be persuaded. It's a persuasion to come to trust into faith. It is the trust and the leaning of the entire human personality on God. In absolute trust and confidence in His power, in His wisdom and goodness. I'll say this part again. It says that faith, this word pistis, is the trust, the leaning of the entire human personality on God. It's absolute trust and confidence in His power. In other words, faith means to be fully persuaded, to come to trust, to lean with your entire personality on God. What does that mean? To lean your personality on God. What, what does that even mean? Well, every single one of us are wired a certain way. Some are wired more internally. They, they reason, they, they come to things differently from other people. They, they think about uh, things internally. They don't fully express. Some people are wired this way, and that's the way God made them. Other people are a little bit more expressive. You know, they, they, they say what they feel, and, <laughs> you know, they wear their feelings on their face. That's the way that God wired their personalities, it's not one is better than the other. It's that God wants both personalities or other personalities to be leaned upon the whole person. If you're a person that's more internal, God wants to show you his faithfulness as you internally trust in him. If you're an expressive person and you tend to be outward, God wants you to throw your whole personality to him and he will be glorified through your person. 
God wants to anoint you for you. God wants to give you faith expressed through how you are. I think the greatest disservice in the church at large is when we try to put people in God in specific categories. I think that God wants to anoint you for who God intended you to be. Amen? And faith will be manifested through your being as you continue to throw yourself to him. You understand? It is to be pers- per- persuaded. The word pistis, I like words, and the word pistis reminds me of this English word uh, piston. It's this part of an engine. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. I am not a mechanic, so I might totally butcher this. Please give me grace. I had to Google this, okay? <laughs> This word pistis reminds me of piston, and it's a disc or a short cylinder fitting closely within a table, I mean, sorry, a tube, in which it moves up and down against a liquid or gas. It's used as an internal combustion to derive motion, to impart motion. And this word uh, piston reminds me of faith, because faith is the piston, or the pistis, to the engine of God's kingdom. We are to live and move and impart motion to actively move with God in this world through our faith. Faith, like a piston that works in an engine, faith needs the gasoline. And the gasoline is love. We've been talking about the last few months um, prayer, then we moved into love. And then a few weeks ago, we talked about John, I believe John 11, if I'm not mistaken, with the story of the resurrection of Lazarus, how the scripture says that Jesus wept, he was moved with compassion, and with his faith, the resurrection of Lazarus came forth. It was the love of God motivating Jesus to speak with faith and activate the reality in, that, in his present reality. And so, Faith works by love. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Paul over here is um, contending for the simplicity of the gospel in the book of Galatians. He's talking about law versus grace. There's just so, there's just so many things. But he says this side note here. He says, for in Christ Jesus. Who's in Christ Jesus. And there's not, no one's in Christ Jesus? Who's in Christ Jesus? We're all in Christ Jesus. For in Christ Jesus, I might have to preach the gospel or something. (laughs) For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. He's talking about the outward things. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. It's, it's faith activated and expressed and working through love. Now, why does faith work by love? Um, I, I tend to ask these questions. Why? 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 It used to get me in a lot of trouble. Dad, when I was looking at Dad, why do we do this? Why do we do that, Dad? Why do we? My dad would be like, Shh, don't, don't question it. We just do what we do. You know? No. Sometimes it's good to ask questions. God is not embarrassed or... He, he's not intimidated by your questions. Sometimes, as a side note, doubt causes you to do two things. Doubt either causes you to run away or it causes you to run to and examine. When Jesus resurrected and doubting Thomas, he's like, unless I see with my hands and I start touching the wounds that are on his side, then I'll believe. Then Jesus appears and Jesus doesn't necessarily rebuke him up front. He says, Thomas, come here. Let your doubts come to me. And he puts his hands and and the scripture says that Thomas said, my Lord and my God, he came to faith because his doubt moved him into the person. And God is okay with you asking questions. God is okay. He's a big God and he can handle it. But allow your doubts to motivate you into God. You see, even with Thomas's personality, he was doubtful. But in his personality, he moved towards Christ and he came to faith. That's just a side note. 
Why do we, why does faith work by love? Because this is simple, because love is God and God is love. In other words, love is a person. Faith works by love. Faith works by God. Faith works by a trust in a person. A trust. All faith really is, is the trust in a person. This is why faith works by love. If it's my own faith, and I start you know, speaking and believing, but there's no connection or trust with God, my faith is dead. Because our faith hooks up to who he is. Faith is a lot like electricity. There's a current in the house, but until we plug to the source, then we can see those things turn on and the lights turn on. It's the same with with faith in God. We can have faith and belief, but if it's not connected to trust in the Father, in who God said he is, then it doesn't work. It's dead. Faith works by love. Faith works by trust. Faith originates and proceeds from love, and love is a person. 1 John chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, and then verse 16 says something very interesting about this. It says in verse 8, it says, For whoever does not love does not know God. Because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. And so we know and rely on the love of God that he has for us. Verse 16, God is love. And whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. The scripture says that God inhabits the praises of his saints. Does it not say that? God manifests himself through the praises of his saints. But when you have love for another, it doesn't just turn into an, in, just inhabiting. It turns to a permanent dwelling. When we love one another, when we choose love because we trust him, he begins to permanently make his home. This is the higher way. Amen? Faith works through love. Faith in its truest form is simply trust and dependency in God himself. To grow in faith is to grow in God. This requires, get this, intentional, everybody say this with me, intentional, fellowship with God. You want to grow in faith, you must grow in God. You want to grow in belief, you must be connected to actively being in him. Because our faith does not come from you. Your faith does not come from you. I can show you in the word. Faith does not come from you. It's his gift towards you. Romans 12, verse 3. Look at this scripture. It's very interesting. It says... For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think yourselves with sober judgment. Look at this part. In accordance, everybody say this, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Who is distributing the faith? God is. He is distributing the faith to each of you. Again, to grow in faith is to grow in God. This requires constant fellowship with Christ. Now, what's also interesting as a side note, if you keep reading Romans 12, 3, it talks about more uh, more so after these verses, it talks about, actually, you know what? I'll just turn there real briefly. I'm going to read this. From the NIV, it says, just just take a listen here. For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to you. For just 
as each one of us is one body with many members, and these members do not have all the same function, so in Christ, through many, form one body, and each member belongs to all others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to us. If it is the gift to prophesy, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, serve. If it's teaching, teach. If it's to encourage, give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Now watch this. Love must be sincere. You see in verse 3, it talks about the faith. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost, man. (laughs) Faith is given to you in verse 3. But if you keep looking, the faith expresses itself through love. Because these gifts are not just for you and you only. It's, it's to serve one another. And then if finally, the climax of that is love must be sincere. I'm going to try to tone it down, okay? Love must be sincere. You see how faith and love work together, it's beautiful. Who wants to grow in faith? I want to grow in faith. How do we grow in faith? Romans ten seventeen. Is this okay if I preach the Bible at you? <laughs> we need the word, right? The word and the spirit agree. Romans ten seventeen. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. In the King James, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This word, word, if I'm not mistaken, is the word rami, and it means spoken. It means the speaking of God. It means when God speaks presently to your situation. When God speaks to your situation, faith arises. There's nothing like hearing from God. When you hear it, faith goes into you and you believe it. This is how we grow in faith. But in order for us to hear the present word, we must be presently active in the Lord. We must be about the Father's business. And you know what the Father's business is? To believe in His Son and to worship Him in spirit and truth and to preach the gospel to the lost. But it's not backwards. It's not backwards. It's not preach the gospel to the... No, He wants a church and a bride that is glorious without spot or wrinkle or blemish. But the only way he does that is through the washing of his word. You can't even do it yourself. He's got to do it for you, and you have to be connected to receive that. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is how we grow in faith. What I see in the scripture is a twofold revelation. Everybody say this with twofold revelation. There's a twofold revelation. Maybe there's more. Faith comes through hearing... And hearing the word, that's relationship with God's word. You can't come to faith without the words of God. When we read the scriptures, faith will come alive to you. Because his word is what brings life. In Isaiah, it says that my word shall not return back to me void. But it shall accomplish that which I have purposed it to do. It does not return back void. His word is like seed. Our hearts are like a garden. And if we receive the seed of his word, we can bear fruit for him and we can hear him. Number two, faith comes through hearing the word, which is the word of God, God's word. Does it sound like I repeated myself? I didn't. Because I said the word of God and the, and the word of God himself. The word became flesh. We, we come to faith by receiving the scriptures. God gives us the faith to believe it. We enter in. But we also believe in God's, God's growth within us as we commune with the living word of God. It is a person, the man Christ Jesus. You need the word and you need prayer to receive these things, to grow in faith. You want to grow in God, grow in the word. Grow in the word of God and grow in the God of the word. Amen? Since faith comes from God, it is certain and true that his faith is not your own. This is why we must cleave and cling to God and grow in the grace of faith. One of my favorite uh, uh, scriptures is Galatians 2.20. And this is to kind of further solidify this idea that your faith is not your own. It 
says, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This was Paul's treasured secret. Well, it really wasn't a secret because he told us. In the original context, it says that I live by the faith of the Son of God. Other translation says the faithfulness of God. He's saying here that he no longer belongs to this world. He has cru- he's been crucified with Christ. He no longer lives. The old Paul has died. But the new Paul is that Christ lives, lived in him. The life that he now lives in this flesh, he lives by the faith of the Son of God. You see this? It is cleaving to Christ and Christ himself giving you the faith. He wants us to live like this. It's grace. Grace. Grace is the ability in which God gives you a gift that you did not deserve. Who deserved to be saved? Show of hands, anybody? Nobody. Because it's by his grace. And he wants to give you faith and he wants you to grow from faith to faith by his grace. This requires fellowship with God. Amen? Amen? Now, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, and we're going to wrap this up. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us Look, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Some translation says the author and finisher of our faith. Who wrote the book of faith in you? Who is the author of your faith? God is. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, why does it seem that there are attacks in your life? If you're a human being, you're going to get attacked. You're going to go through one attack, or you're going to come out of another attack, or you're just getting over a hurdle. Why does it seem that when you give your life to Christ, I have seen this myself, that as you begin to give your life to Christ, it just seems that all hell breaks loose against you. Have you ever noticed this? Why does it seem this way? Why does it seem that as you give your life to Christ and you pursue him, you get attacked? Maybe in your finances, maybe with your children, maybe something in your body. Why does it seem this way? Friends, we are called to live by faith, not by sight. The word sight means appearances. It might appear a certain way, but faith looks through the appearance. Satan will try to attack you in the area of your faith because he knows that your faith has the capability to extinguish all his lies. That's why you get attacked in your faith. The faith is being attacked. Satan attacks your faith because he is attacking Christ in you and seeks to cripple his power in your life. And if we don't have the eyes to see that, we'll believe a narrative that is totally contrary to the mercy and the love of God. We'll be like that son that said, I'm not worthy to become your child or your son. And he saw the father running. He had one narrative in his mind. He made this complete story, this fabricated lie about who his father was. But he was wrong. His father was running towards him. Because when we... When we get attacked, and if we don't see it for what it is, it cripples us. Ephesians. I'm almost done. (laughs) Ephesians 6, 10 through 17. Finally, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in who? The Lord. Does it say your, your own strength? Does it say your own power? Does it say your intellect? No, it says be strong in the Lord. In the Lord. In the Lord. He wants you to run in Him. To be strengthened in Him. Be strong in the Lord in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you'll be able to take against 
stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but against rulers, authorities, powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand firm on your ground after you've done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place with your, sh- with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition, take up the shield of faith, which you can what? Extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Your faith has the ca- ca- capability To extinguish the lies of Satan. This is why we get attacked. And then it says, take the helmet of salvation, which is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The goal of the enemy of your soul is to get you to a place of double mindedness. Because it's in double mindedness that brings you to a place where you cannot receive anything from God. And he knows that. Last verse, promise, okay? James 1, 2, and 8. I'm going to say this again. The goal of the enemy of your soul is to get you to a place of double-mindedness. Because it's in double-mindedness that brings you to a place where you cannot receive anything from the Lord. What does it mean to be double-minded? A double-minded person is when you... Are, it's, it's, it literally means this word literally to have two minds. To have two brains. I believe, I believe, I believe, but no, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. And where does this double-mindedness come from? The mind. And Satan seeks to attack you in your mind to get you to a place where you can't receive anything from God. And it's not God's fault that you can't receive it. It's the principle that one is not in faith any longer. Look. Last verse, I promise. Consider it pure joy. (laughs) It's fun to have fun in church, right? Okay. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature, complete, lacking nothing. If any of you, listen, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must what? Believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. A wave goes up and a wave comes down. A wave goes up, a wave goes down. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Ow! But it's the truth. God wants you to grow His faith in you. He wants you to be fully persuaded to lean your entire personality on Him and trust and in confidence of His power and goodness. He is faithful and true, Victory Church. He can be trusted and depended upon because of His faithfulness. He wants you to trust Him. He wants you to grow in your faith. He wants you to grow in your faith because it gives Him glory. Therein my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. God wants to be glorified in your life. And as you continue to be single-minded, single-minded to, be, to have the attention of only one thing, you're going to be able to slip into a greater reality of God like you've never known. Because God cannot be mocked. If you have singleness of mind and heart, you can receive freely what He's freely given. So in the middle of the storm, you can bank on the fact that if you keep your eyes on the finisher and author of your faith, you can walk on the water as you continue to look at Him. With the eyes of faith, you can be like that woman with the issue of blood who pressed through the crowd and received a touch from Him Himself. It is our faith, and it is His faith, in you. He wants you to be 
receiving that which he's given you. In Jesus' name, amen? amen. Okay, with every eye closed, I just want to say a quick prayer and then... Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that we can choose to trust in you, Lord. I pray that you would un give us an unveiling and a revelation of what faith is. Faith comes through hearing your word. And as we continue to be in close proximity with the scriptures and in close proximity with the presence of the word, I pray that you would continue to grow the faith that you've given us. For all of us have been given a measure of faith. Lord, you see every need. You see every person. You see the crisis. You see everything. Lord, I pray that as we continue to engage ourselves with you, yes, you will cause us to walk over the storm and live a victorious life in you. For your glory, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Continue to bow your heads for just a moment. Chris, I, I know just uh, from prayer this morning, last night, uh, the Spirit just told me there would be three people between the church and the mission um, that needed to give their hearts uh, or give their hearts, either give their hearts or give their hearts more fully to Jesus today. And so I want us to give the opportunity. Yes. Uh, as you've heard this word, as the Holy Spirit's ministered to you through this good word that's been shared, if the Holy Spirit is drawing you to give your heart more fully to Jesus this morning, maybe to give your heart for the first time to Jesus, or to give your heart more fully to Jesus, my goal is not to embarrass you. Our goal is to pray for you and believe with you, and then provide um, counsel and encouragement to you. So if you would like for us to pray for you 